As I came back and was asked to teach tonight, uh, this portion of scripture kept coming into my mind. The portion of scripture that we're going to be in tonight, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 21. And this is a bit of a different type of message because the message tonight is a prayer that I have for you. The message tonight is a prayer that I have that God really put on my heart for every single one of you as, a, as, a, as our church. And I, I, as I came back from my trip, I believe the Lord laid on my heart a prayer for every one of us. To, so tonight, this is my prayer for you. Verse 14, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. God, we thank you so much for, uh, Lord, just your, your the work that you do in our hearts, God, the work that you do through our lives, Lord, just uh, bless, God, that you want to use us, desire to use us, God, not just in our city, but around the world, Lord. We're so grateful, God, for all the work that you do in and through our lives. And tonight, God, we ask that you just speak to our hearts as we study your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Paul, Paul here is writing again from prison. He's in prison during the time he's, he's writing to the Ephesians, just finished reminding the Ephesians of his calling to preach to the Gentiles. And, and through that, God has had appointed many tribulations for Paul, but he encourages the Ephesians not to lose heart because of the tribulations he was facing, not to give up in their endeavors for the Lord because the tribulation he was, uh, was going through was a tribulation that was for a purpose, for a purpose ultimately. So his prayer was, the basis of Paul's prayer to the Ephesians was his knowledge of God's will and purpose. He knew all of this was according to God's plan. And, and so he prayed according to the will of the Father. And I was thinking, as I was thinking about our mission trip and our group coming back to Calvary here in Las Vegas, as I began to, to pray and to think about Vegas lights on Wednesday nights and, and, uh, and our heart for this service specifically, I, I believe God laid this prayer on my heart for all of us, not just for you, but even for myself. This is a prayer for us. And uh, I was on Facebook the other day, and one of our missionaries, uh, they posted a quote on uh, his Facebook that encouraged me and really ties into tonight. He, he shared a quote from Brent Merrick from his, his book, Godspeed, and it says, I quote, a Christian's life, uh, excuse me, a Christian's entire life is the mission trip. In the same way the Father sent the Son, Jesus sends us, the church, on mission, uh, through the Great Commission, he invites us into a purpose that is bigger than ourselves. We have the opportunity to exist for something greater than our own dramas, our own wants, our own needs, and our own dreams. This fact should blow our minds that with all of our flimsy, fleshy, and cheesy humanity, the Creator would still ask us to share in what is most important to Him. Being on mission is the paradigm shift of a lifetime. The greatest adventure is to hear the invitation and to respond. The greatest tragedy is to ignore our calling and go on living life as usual, end quote. And as I got back from the trip, this really is what God laid on my heart. I talked a lot about this with our team back in Seattle, how simple ministry can be, yet how God can use it so mightily. I, I think about, uh, uh, you know, Brian was sharing a little bit about that, our, our hum, uh, human library as he was talking about that, and, and a lot of you guys were like, what the heck did they do over there, a human library, what the heck is that? And uh, a lot of people in Seattle were thinking the same thing, and as we're screaming, come see the human library, everybody's like, what the, you know? But uh, uh, in, in Seattle, there's a, a part of Seattle called Capitol Hill, and that's the LGBT community. And, and you can literally feel the oppression of the enemy there. I brought the group there at the beginning of the, of the trip just to pray for that part of the city to do a prayer walk through the community, and, and it was heavy. We came back like, man, I, 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 I asked every one of them, I was like, did you feel it? Did you feel that? And man, it was so thick. So I encouraged the group that I would be open on our last day for them to come up and create their own outreach to Capitol Hill. 
And my wife and I, we kind of joked and said, this could go one of two ways. Uh, <laughs> either everybody comes up with some really great ideas or they come back and they're like, nah, I don't know. Or like, man, this could, this could end up really bad, but obviously God did something powerful through the group and they used the group powerfully to come up with this idea. And I, I can't even claim it as my own. This was, this was all God using this group and God giving them creativity, giving them uh, you know, the, those ideas. And, and God used it so powerfully that night. We, we got to share our stories with so many people and so many people were so blessed by them. And it was so simple. We, we took a piece of paper, a piece of poster board, and drew our story out in some creative way. Uh, like three of them are artists. Um, I'm not one of them. And I uh, literally looked up, because I have a, a tattoo of a ship on my, on my arm that kind of deals with my testimony. And so I was like, well, I'll kind of copy that. And so I literally looked up on Google how to draw a ship. And they took me through like eight steps of like, draw this and then draw this. And felt like I was back in art class. And, I, and this one guy came up to me and and he, and he looked at, at my ship. He's like, I want to hear your story. He's like, so that ship is like 8th century Spanish. Um, may, oh, the ropes there, maybe it's English. Uh, and I was like, bro, I looked it up on WikiHow. And... Um, <laughs> It showed, me, it showed me eight steps to draw. I have no idea what the ship is, but you, you, you know better than me. But I was able to share my story to him about how uh, life comes with so many different trials and storms and all of those kind of things and, and uh, kind of deals with the story it as well. And I can tell you that in a different, different time. We don't have time uh, tonight, but I uh, got to share my story of how um, it's not about the what's that happen to our lives because all of us have different what's that happen, different storms that happen, different things that go on that happened to us in our lives. None of us are perfect. We're all broken people. We all have crazy experiences that happen, but it's about who we turn to. It's about how we respond that really defines us. And I said, and what, how I responded was I, I, God called me to him. God called me to himself, and so I turned to Jesus, and Jesus, he, he filled me with hope. He gave me hope and a purpose, and he gave me life, and he showed me his compassionate love for me. And, and that's why we're here, is to, just to share our story to you, that God wants to fill you with hope and love and, 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 com, and his compassion for you. And uh, the, guy, uh, the guy was like, <laughs> I prayed for him, and, and the guy was like, wow, this is the best library I've ever been to, and, uh, and left. It was awesome. But my prayer for this church, first and foremost, is that according to the riches of his glory, it says here in chapter three, according to the riches of his glory, that you would be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That you'd be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. But that means first that you need to be connected to the Holy Spirit, to the inner man. To be strengthened is to be connected to the Spirit. When I was, uh, a couple years ago, we went to New England for a mission trip, and I'm driving through Boston, and, and uh, if you ever have driven through Boston, it is literally the worst city to drive through. It's so hard to figure out where you're driving, and, and I'm trying to use Google Maps, and uh, every tunnel I go through, it just would, would shut down my, my, my uh, you know, my my Wi-Fi or my, uh, you know, connection to, to uh, the satellite and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure out where it's going. And, and it's like, turn right in, and then it stops. And I'm like waiting till I'm getting out of the tunnel, and it's like rerouting, U-turn. I'm like, whoa, no! And it kept losing my direction and kept flipping UEs and things like that. And, and, uh, and really for us, that's, that's kind of the, 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 the picture for us is uh, if you keep losing the connection, if you keep losing your connection to the spirit, you get lost. You get lost. And, and so my question is, are you connected to the spirit tonight? Are you connected to the spirit tonight? Because if, if not, if you're not connected to the Holy Spirit, when you lose your connection, you lose your direction. And that can be spiritually draining for us. You need to be connected so our Father in heaven can strengthen you with, the, with might through the Holy Spirit. You need to be connected to the Holy Spirit. And, and so it, it can be spiritually draining when you're not. And, that, and sometimes, you know, people will come up to me and like, man, I just feel dry. I feel dry in my walk with the Lord. And, and I don't know what it is. I keep reading and I keep coming to church, but I just feel dry. And some of the things I say is, man, have you, have you been baptized afresh with the Holy Spirit of God? Have you, are you connected with the Holy Spirit where you're allowing God to speak to you, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you, allowing God to strengthen you with his might through the Holy Spirit? And often that can be why we're feeling so dry drained, why we're feeling so, so dry. And so my, my prayer for us is that we would be strengthened with his might through, through the Holy Spirit to the inner man. 
My prayer for this church, secondly, is that the church, uh, that Christ, excuse me, dwell in your hearts through faith, it says here in Ephesians chapter 3. That Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. You need to have Jesus in your heart. This is the foundation for our walks with the Lord, that we need to have Jesus in our hearts. It's not about attending church. It's not about doing good things and being a good person. It's not about our economical standing or our social standing. It's not about where we're from or whose family we grew up in. It's, our, it's personal. We need to have a personal relationship with Jesus, Jesus personally within our hearts. Jesus is, is who builds our faith. When we have Jesus in our hearts, it's, it's hard to contain him and keep him to ourselves. It's not his nature to keep Jesus to ourself. So he will tug on your heart, hey, go share with that person. Go share with that person. Man, when you're at work, hey, go, go talk to this person. Tell them about me. And when we're walking through the streets, hey, go pay for this person. Go give that person $20, even though you may have your, your preconceptive ideas that, that homeless people don't really do what, what we think they do with $20. I want you to give them $20. I don't have $20. I, I want you to give them $20. I want you to give them that because I want, to, I want him to buy a Bible. I want him to have, I want to go into his heart. And so he, he, he tugs on your heart for these specific moments in life and, and hey, go share with this. Hey, you, you help, that family out. help that family out. I want to tell them that I love them. Go talk to that family. I want to tell them that I have a plan and a purpose for their life. As Jesus dwells in our hearts, the natural thing that will, will want to come out from us to the world is Jesus. We're like sponges, you see. We're like sponges, and whatever is dwelling within our hearts, whatever we soak into our hearts will come out when this world squeezes us. So if we have hatred within our hearts, when, when the world squeezes us, hate is gonna come out. When we have jealousy within our hearts, when the world squeezes us, vengeance comes out. But when we have Jesus in our hearts, and the world squeezes us, and things happen to us, and storms happen, or trials happen, or just something in life happens, and the world squeezes us, the love and compassion of Christ comes out. The gospel is shared, your testimony is proclaimed. And as Paul continues, being rooted and grounded in love, he says, being rooted and grounded in love, the only way we can be rooted and grounded in love is with Jesus Christ in our hearts. There's so much going on in the world right now, you guys have seen, in our, in our country right now specifically. And what, what the church needs to do is have Jesus in their hearts and be rooted and grounded in love. A lot of people responding right now in anger and in hatred. What this country needs the most is the love of Jesus Christ. They need to have Jesus in their hearts personally to be rooted and grounded in love. And thirdly, my prayer for you is to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. How crazy is that? That you would know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. God wants you to know the love of Christ which, which passes knowledge. He wants us to know through experience as well, to experience his love, the width and length and depth and height which his love is so wide that he, would, he loved the whole world that he gave himself up for it. His love is so long that it will stretch for eternity and will never fail. His love is so deep that it can reach any sinner. And his love is so high that it has no bounds. I remember uh, on, the, on the trip uh, at that, that place, uh, Westlake, where they were up on the stage and sharing and God was using their testimonies, and, and uh, this place is really crazy. In Seattle, the, uh, the area that we were ministering to at, at Westlake is, is one of the highest ratios of, dru of uh, heroin distribution in that, that, that spot. So literally, we're seeing people passing needles to each other and doing drug deals right there. I mean, my wife was at Starbucks, turns around, and they're passing needles right there. And it's not, just, it's not homeless people. It's like you, you, and, you and me. It's, it's just normal people walking around and, and doing that. It's a crazy epidemic up there. And so we're, we're sharing. And we're sharing our stories, and this guy is walking by, and uh, uh, literally, this guy, um, he's walking uh, past us because uh, that, that we're kind of in the, a really, uh, um, you know, pretty popular section. He's, he's walking past us to get to the crosswalk to turn left, and what he's about to do, he's about to go, go commit suicide. That's what he was headed to do on that night. 
He's walking to go commit suicide that night. He was going to jump off a bridge or something like that. He was headed towards that direction to go commit suicide. And he came up to one of our guys, JP, and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, was talking to him. But he sat down and he started listening to um, the testimonies. Started listening to what God was doing in our lives and, and each of, of these people's testimonies. And, and after a while, he asked JP, he said, man, I, I, need, to talk to, uh, I need to talk to a pastor. And, uh, and so he gave me a call and I came over there and he literally said, hey, I don't want you to, to convince me otherwise. My only question for you is if I commit suicide tonight, am I going to hell? Am, am, am I going to hell, hell or am I going to heaven? I love Jesus, but I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I, it, he to, it tells me uh, about his, how he lost his eight-month-old daughter a couple of weeks ago. And, and then shortly after that, his dad passed away and, uh, from his battle with cancer. And, he, and he's like, I can't take it. I just can't take it anymore. And I, and I said, I, I don't, I'm not going to answer that question, but I am going to, I am going to tell you something else. And I started to tell, I, I started to try to connect with them one on, on uh, I've had loss in my life. My mom passed away when I was 11 years old and have had a lot of family members pass away in my life and friends that have passed away. And, and, I, and I told him, I said, you know, the only place that I could find hope, the only place that I could find purpose in my life is when I gave my life to Jesus. Jesus gave me hope. Jesus gave me a purpose in my life. And what he showed me, what he showed me in my life was how deep and how wide and how long and, and how amazing his compassionate love is for me. And I said, let me tell you, let me tell you something about his love for you. I said, let, let me tell you a little bit about his love for you specifically. I said, um, we're from Las Vegas. We're not even from here. Uh, I chose, I, I prayed about what date to come, to come to Seattle. I could have picked any date. Could have picked any weekend to come to Seattle, but I chose this weekend. I chose these dates. I could, we could have come on any other night to, to come to this, uh, to this stage. This, these guys, these churches do it only once a month. On Friday nights, they go out to the stage. It's in the middle of, of, of Seattle, a br amazing, amazing uh, spot in Seattle. I said, well, we could have picked, the, the, the church could have picked any day to come out here because they only do it once a month, but they chose this day. You could have came... An hour earlier, you could have started walking past us, and we wouldn't have been there. Or an hour later, and we wouldn't have been there. But God had you pass us right now. God had you and myself come, come face to face. You know why? Because Jesus loves you personally. That's how great his love is for you, is that he sought you out personally. And he wants to give you purpose tonight. He wants to give you, he wants to show you how much hope he can give you and wants to show you how much love he has for you. You won't even understand how much love he has for you because it passes understanding. It passes your knowledge. He wants you to know that and comprehend that, that, that kind of love that he has for you because he gave himself up for you when he put himself on the cross. And when he rose again on the third day so that you can have a relationship with him. And, and uh, um, it was an amazing, amazing time of, of fellowship and, and uh, uh, of ministry with him. And he chose not to commit suicide that night. And uh, praise the Lord. I told the group, I said, you see how, how simple like, and how amazing God can use just a simple step of faith. A simple step of faith. I was like, who knew that just from going on this trip that God would use this group to literally save somebody's life, literally stop somebody from taking his life. How deep and how wide and how high his love is for each and every one of us. And tonight, the same thing is for you. Tonight, maybe you, you've run out of hope. You're not here by accident. Maybe you've run out of hope tonight and you've come here searching for a last bit of hope. It, you're not here by accident. There's, there's, there's a reason why you're here. God specifically wanted you here for a reason because he wants a relationship with you, because he loves you. He's reaching out to your heart specifically and personally. And even more than that, as the church, we are to comprehend and grow in that knowledge of his love for us together. There's unity amongst the believers of Jesus Christ. We share in his love and the comprehension of it. And as we grow in his love, we grow, uh, we grow in love for one another as the body of Christ. And th that love even becomes a mark of salvation and a mark of discipleship for the rest of the world. Jesus said, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. 
And uh, if you guys missed out on Sunday night, we had an amazing, amazing time Sunday night. We had a couple of guest pastors, a panel that, that talked about this, because really this is the, the struggle right now in our, in our country and, and, uh, and, and the, the uh, importance of being rooted and grounded in love and how important it is for us as the body of Christ, not just for Calvaries, but as the body of Christ. For believers all around the country, all around our city, or all around the, all around the world, to love one another, and that love is a defining factor. It's a it's a uh, recognizable mark of a disciple is your love for one another because you're rooted and grounded in the love of Jesus. And fourthly, my prayer is that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I pray that each one of us would be filled with all the fullness of God. But is that even possible? Have you thought about that? That our finite bodies can hold the fullness of God. That's, that's powerful. That God wants to fill us with all the fullness of God. Well, let me first say that there's plenty of God to go around for everyone. And so, you know, I talked to a, a friend of mine a long time ago that was like, man, I don't think God has enough love for me. And I'm like, oh, yes, he does. There's plenty of God to go around for every single one of us. But I think that that is why um, he, he says this. There's a, an abundance of the Lord to go around to be filled with this fullness. But, but I think we are, are filled to overflowing. Filled to overflowing so that it's not just to the brim, but we're filled up so that we can, can impact the people around us. That it's overflowing with the fullness of God within our lives and within our, our, our souls. So that we can impact the people around us. And then Paul ends with this benediction, the benediction for us, the blessing that we can all glorify God for here. Through all of this, we can say now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think. Do you believe that God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask or think? Let that settle in for a second. That God desires to do exceedingly, abundantly beyond what you could ever ask or think. Not just one time, not just once and and that was enough for him. Not just twice, but continually. That God can continually do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. God is able to do it. Think about that, that how, how God can, think about right now how God can use you at your work. There's probably things coming up in in your mind, people coming up in your mind, situations coming up in your mind. Think about how God can use you at your work right now. Did you know that God wants to use you even beyond what you're thinking right now? That might scare some of us. (laughs) We're like, whoa, God, that's that's a lot. But did you know that God wants to blow away your expectations? Whatever you're expecting and use, he wants to use you even beyond the greatest thought. Beyond the greatest idea, beyond the greatest thought of what you could do for your work, what you could do for the city, God wants to go beyond that. And the amazing thing is often he uses even the small things, a piece of poster board, some markers and some pretty bad artists like myself, (laughs) to use something that we do, a small thing that we do to impact exceedingly and abundantly above we could ever ask or think. It's not... It's not about, it's not about how much you can do. He's not expecting you to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you could ever ask or think. He's going to do it through you because it's about him who is doing it through each and every one of us. Think about how God can use you at your school. Did you know that God wants to use you even beyond what you are thinking right now for your school? Maybe you've been praying for your family. Did you know that God wants to do even more for your family than what you're praying and asking for? And think about for yourself. The things that you pray for yourself, did you know that God wants to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you could even ask or think? You may say, I want to be used by God, but I don't think I'm ready. I don't think I'm ready for this. But God wants wants to use you beyond what you could ever ask or think. And why am I bringing this up tonight? Why am I encouraging us with this? Because I believe it's the heart of God for us. I believe this is the heart of God for us, especially for Wednesday nights, for Vegas Lights. The next part says, according to the power that works in us. According to the power that works in us. That means that God wants to work his power in and through us now. Right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. 
Not after a year of following God. Not, not after I finish reading the whole Bible. Not, not after we go to Bible college. Not when a mission trip comes up. Not after we get to heaven. God wants it right now. God wants to work his power in and through you tonight. Tonight he wants to do that. Right now he's given you this moment to work his power in and through your life. And it's easy though to get distracted with the cares of this, this world and with life, to get burdened with the cares of this world and with life and with, with all the different things that happen to us in our lives. But, but God wants to use us now. He wants to use us. We have, I was thinking about this, I was praying this today. I don't think we realize the opportunity we have here in Las Vegas. The mission field that we have here in Las Vegas, in every one of our workplaces, at our schools, when we go home, we're in Las Vegas. God has placed us here to be salt and light here, to be a a city set on a hill here, to show his love, his love that, that passes knowledge to the people here in Las Vegas. What an amazing opportunity we have. What an amazing gift we have to share the love with a place like Las Vegas, with a city like Las Vegas. God wants to use you now. He wants to do exceedingly abundantly above what you could ever ask or pray right now. And that's how great our God is. That is how compassionate and how great his love is for us. The mission trip is right now. The mission trip is now. You're on it. You didn't have to pay for it. You're on it right now. You didn't have to go on a plane to get to it. You are on it right now. When we got back from our mission trip to Seattle, we stepped right onto another mission field, right into another trip. God wants to use you now. We're all in it. The, fit, the mission field is right out these doors. Right when we step out, this is our field. This is our mission field. Las Vegas, Nevada. And tonight, even before the work, even before God does the work, we can give him glory tonight. We can praise him for the work that he's going to do already right now. Why? Because, because God is gonna do it. Because we can trust that God is going to do it. He's not going to fail. He's going to be there. He's going to use us. In our sh- even in the midst of our shortcomings, even in the midst of the things we don't know or do know or any of those kind of things, the, the, you know, uh, uh, through our gifts, through our talents, all of those things, God wants to use us. And God wants to impact Las Vegas for his glory and for his kingdom. And tonight, we can give him praise for what he's going to do and and what he will do in this city. Sometimes we can forget to glorify God and praise him for the little things. Praise him for those those little things, those little opportunities God gives us. Man, that time that I can say, hey, you know Jesus loves you, and it may not be a huge amount of time that I have to, to share with somebody, but man, it's planting a seed and God can use it. We can give him glory even before the work is done because we can trust that he will do it because he will never fail. He has never failed, and he will never fail. So tonight we can say to him, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And I'll say amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you already, Lord, for the work that you're going to do through our hearts, God. And Lord, we know that's your nature. We know, God, how much you love this city. Lord, you gave your son Jesus for this city, God. You literally gave Jesus for the city of Las Vegas to die for us, for every single one of us. Jesus, so we know it's your nature, God, because of your love, because of your compassion to reach out to this lost and dying world. And so God, as we know that we have you in our hearts, for those who have tr- put their trust and faith in Jesus, Lord, we, we have you within our hearts, Lord. So help us, Lord. Help us to outreach to this community, outreach to this city, to our neighborhoods, to our workplaces, to our schools, Lord. We wanna be a witness, we wanna be an example. We want to be a testimony and to use our testimonies, Lord, for your glory to see you work your power in and through our lives. So God, I pray for, for us as your church here. I don't, I don't divide myself from everybody else, God. I, we are your church. I pray for us as a ministry, as a church, Lord, as the body of Christ, God, that we'd fulfill what you're calling us to do here. 
and that we'd see a work, Lord, through just taking a step of faith, trusting you for great things and expecting you to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what we could ever ask or think. God, our thoughts right now is for the city. God, that we would see a revival in this city. And Lord, I can only imagine if that is what's in my mind, God, what you could do above and beyond that. And how tangible that is for you because you are the God of, of, of the impossibilities. You can do miracles still to this day. God, you are, you are the God that can do the impossible. That will never fail. And so, Lord, we trust that tonight. And for some of us, Lord, who have never put our trust and faith in you, who don't have Jesus within their hearts, Lord, I pray that they would make it right tonight with you. That they accept you as their Lord and Savior tonight. And with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, if that's you tonight, if you have never put your trust and faith in Jesus and you know you need Jesus tonight, you know you need hope, you want to know where you're going after you die, you want to know that you're going to go to heaven and spend eternity with Jesus, I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray and, and lead you in a prayer that begins your life with Jesus. If that's you tonight and you know you need Jesus in your heart, would you please raise your hand so I can pray for you tonight? I see your hand. Thank you so much for raising your hand. Is there anybody else tonight? God, I pray for my sister tonight, Lord, and that as she takes this this step of faith, Lord, to give her life to you, God, that you would work a powerful work within her life. That she would know the love that you have for her and the plan that you have for her and the purpose that you have for her life. And where you're seated tonight, I want to lead you in a prayer that begins your life with Jesus. It's not a prayer to this church, but it's a prayer between you and the Lord. Repeat after me tonight. Say, dear God, I give you my life. I confess that I'm a sinner, but I'm turning away from my sin tonight. And I'm turning to your son, Jesus. I believe that he died for me that he rose again on the third day and that through faith in him I'm your child and that I'm forgiven. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. I give you my heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as the worship team comes up, I just want to have one more prayer for, for, uh, for each of uh, us uh, as, as the body of Christ that God would use us in this city. So as the worship team comes up and as we uh, uh, give God glory tonight and encourage you guys to not, to not walk out tonight and, and to, uh, to give God your heart tonight, to, to worship him with all of your hearts. But let's stand together. God, I lift up my brothers and sisters to you right now, God, that you would use every single person in this room, God. I know you have a desire to use every single one of them. You know them by name. You know the very hairs on their head, Lord. You know their gifts, their talents, what what their calling is, God. I pray for each and every one of them that you would use them, God, to use them in this city that you would send them as missionaries to their, their workplace, that you would send them as missionaries to their schools, to their families, to their friends. God, that you would use them, Lord, to people they've never met before on the street. I pray right now for us together, God, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit right now. That you would baptize us afresh with your Holy Spirit. That we would be strengthened with might in the inner man through your Holy Spirit right now to be used by you in a powerful way to impact the city for your kingdom. We love you, Lord. We expect great things from you, God, because you are a great God. Because your love is great, and your mercies are great, and your grace is great. So we pray, Lord, that you'd use us in this city in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship God.